This one still maintains its capacitance even if the two spheres are infinitely apart. How can we explain that? Why? Why does the spherical capacitor maintain some capacitance whereas the parallel plate doesn't? Okay, think about, here's the hint, think about what is happening to the electric field lines of the two spheres as they're moving farther away, the electric field distribution between the two spheres, okay? What's happening to the electric field distribution between the two spheres versus what's happening to the electric field distribution between the plates as they're moving apart, okay? So what is happening? As the two plates go farther apart, right, let's say the plates are like that, they begin looking like point particles to each other, right? And their electric field distribution is going to look like what? A dipole distribution, right? So what happens to the, dense, uh, to the concentration of the electric field lines between them? They get farther apart from each other, right? They're, whereas when they were close, how was the electric field distribution? When they were close, the electric field distribution was concentrated, straight concentrated, so you could pack in energy into that electric field. Uh, when the two plates are farther apart, the electric field is uh, loosely, uh, it's basically um, diverges here, and they're, they're, uh, they're really loosely bound to each other, and you cannot, as with uh, the electric field, energy does not carry as much energy. The electric field lines don't carry as much energy as uh, the electric field lines here. The, these ones are a lot more concentrated. How about the spheres? When they're close to each other, the electric field distribution looks like spherical. How about when they're infinitely far away? Let's say it's like that. What does the electric field look like? Still a spherical. So the electric field uh, uh, maintains its shape, okay? Even though, yeah, it does get weaker out here, okay? But still maintains its energy, maintains its shape a lot better than with two plates, okay? So it would kind of make sense that as the R2 goes to infinity, you should still have some capacitance, okay? By the way, using this equation, we can calculate what is the approximate uh, capacitance of the Earth or any other planet. Because you can think of the Earth as a, a charged object. It has uh, current in there, current flow and stuff like that. And you can think of the Earth as almost like a single spherical capacitor. Its other partner is out at infinity, the, the outer capacitor. Okay, So the capacitance of the Earth is approximately, okay, then, then we can use this equation, 4 pi e 0, 4 pi e 0. Well, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 1 over k, since this is equal to 1 over k. So I can say 1 over 9 times 10 to the 9th times the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth, I believe, 6,378 uh, kilometers. and then multiply that by 10 to the third. Let's see if I'm right over there, something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's the radius of the Earth. 
So uh, what's that going to be? Give me uh, the answer there. We'll know what the capacitance of the Earth is. Well, so you know what I could do an approximate 6 over 9 is uh, 0.66, so something like 0.66, and then this is going to be 10 to the 6 times 10 to the uh, minus 3, something like that, right? So what is it going to be? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to say it this way. 0 0.708, so 0 0.71 uh, millifarads. So that's basically it, 0 0.71 millifarads. Okay, now let's calculate the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. 